I've installed the base unit on a quarter inch thick piece of aluminum panel. I like to mount these on aluminum. Uh, you can drill and tap the threads, nice secure mounting for all the parts. Uh, it's not wood, it's not gonna rot out. Of course, there's a million ways to hang these things and mount them. We do offer panel mount aluminum uh, water filters where we have all this laid out and you can buy it this way and it arrives on a pallet as well. I've secured it to the back with some 5 16 uh, stainless screws. Here's a neat little trick. Uh, if you're going to mount the base unit, take off the can the sumps, the blue sumps, and take the filters out. So then you're just mounting the top piece, which is a lot lighter to deal with. Uh, if you want to go even further, you could even take the membrane housing off here too, and then you're dismounting the bracket. Uh, something we always do, I'm not going to show it here because it's basic construction. But So we've started out by just mounting the EX1000 tall on our panel. Uh, the next thing to do would be to mount the pump. Okay, so with the pump secured, I'm going to take the control box. So now the pump is mounted. It's not plugged into 120 volt mains, it's just mounted. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is mount the flow box. Now this is a flow box deluxe, okay? This is one of the cooler deluxes we have. We have a UV deluxe too, uh, but we're gonna, for this video, we're gonna install the flow box deluxe. So here's our flow box. The flow box allows you to adjust the waste ratio of the system. It also allows you to monitor the system performance. So you can see if your membrane's putting out 1.5 gallons a minute, over time it'll start decreasing and you'll know uh, when it's gonna get low enough and you're gonna run out of water and when it's a good time to change the membrane and filters. So a flow box is one of my favorite things. We're gonna mount it on top of this unit right now. To do that, we're gonna remove these quarter 20 lock socket cap screws on the top. This is also a mounting point for the UV if you want. You get some spacers. And we're simply gonna put this up top like this. Use the right hole. Okay, now the flow box is mounted. So the next thing I'm gonna do is, on this particular unit, because it's panel mounted, um, I'm gonna plumb the input. I usually plumb the outputs first, but for here I'm gonna plumb the input. Let me pull this out. So we're gonna remove the garden hose fittings. The electric shutoff kit that comes with the Deluxe uh, consists of the electric solenoid valve and some Schedule 80 PVC. Now you don't need to use it all, or any. I really encourage you to plumb the input of this with at least three quarter inch pipe, whether it's gonna be the quick connect CTS style, like this, uh, which fits over these quick connect fittings really nice. I really love this stuff, this is my favorite stuff. Or schedule 80 PVC at one inch or three quarter. The input of the filter is three quarter already, so we're gonna use some three quarter schedule 80. Now these Electric shutoff kits are kind of designed to either to mount like this on the filter like so. But because we're bringing the water in from above here, uh, I'm gonna bring it straight out and up to my supply line, which is one inch CTS quick connect tubing, which I love, and these George Fisher valves. So we're just gonna come straight out. I'm gonna use, let's see. I'm gonna take out this three quarter adapter. I'm gonna go one inch CTS 
right into here. And then I'll use one of these elbows. I'll use the longer one. Like this, plumbed into the water filter. And then my solenoid valve will be right here. Now on the side of the solenoid valve is an arrow, which points to the direction of flow towards the water filter. Make sure you install it in the right position. We also know that the solenoid coil and the manual override switch, which opens the solenoid manually in case it were to fail, is closest to the water filter body. So I'm just gonna wrap these fittings up uh, and put them in right now. That fitting's a little loose, so I'm gonna give it some more Teflon. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a one inch CTS fitting on the front of this solenoid valve. And these are really cool. Once you insert the tube, you twist them and they lock and then the tube can't come out. And you put them in the recessed unlocked position to insert the tube. I love these fittings. Now, I'm not going to be able to get this in because I have a solenoid coil in the way. Now with that installed, real simple. Uh, we're gonna install this piece of CTS tubing. So I'm gonna put in a little piece, lock it, duh, and then cut this piece right here. And install that like so, and then lock that piece. All right. So I'm going to leave the, now the solenoids installed on the front end and I've got water coming down. My feed water is off. Uh, and now I'm going to plumb up uh, the rest of the unit. This unit comes with a spun sediment filter and a KDF 85 carbon filter. Now when we start this unit up, we have to flush these carbon filters because they're really dusty, the KDF 85 carbon filters. Um, and you're going to see, we're going to pour the dusty water into this bottle. Now. The way we do that, uh, these units come plumbed with a piece of half inch tubing here, which usually goes up to the membrane, just like this. But in a deluxe kit, or whenever you're hooking up a BP6010 pump, you're not gonna use this piece. So you can pull it out. And we'll take some of the half inch tubing that comes with this model and plumb it in right there. Now, Eventually, this piece of tubing is going to go to the pump input right up here. Real simple. But we need to flush this carbon. And so generally, we would undo this tube and point it into a bottle and flush the carbon. But here's a really simple mod that you, everyone should really do. I'm going to take two half-inch valves and a half-inch T, and I'm going to plug that in here. Real simple, just like that. Now I'm going to plumb the pump. I'm going to plumb this up to the pump, which will be right, right here. 
and just insert that to the pump input. Now what's really cool about this is I have a little carbon flush valve set up. And I'll take a piece of half inch here and uh, I'm going to run it right down in to this jug. Now if this was your uh, facility, instead of using a five gallon carboy, uh, you could run this to drain. With both valves closed, no water will pass through the unit. If I leave this valve closed and open this valve, I'm flushing my carbon. And no, none of the carbon dust water is going to go into the pump uh, and thus into the membrane, which is very important. If you pump uh, carbon infused water, this dirty water, into the, into the pump and the membrane, you will follow the membrane right away. Uh, and you, you risk hurting the pump. So uh, this is a really great way to have a carbon flush set up right here. So leave this valve closed, leave this one open, flush your carbon. When this water is clear, about 30 gallons of water. Uh, you could go up to 40 gallons of water with these talls uh, to get clear, and we're gonna do that for you. And when it's done, we'll just close this valve and open this one and get ready for normal operation. So, but let's finish plumbing up the unit first. So let's flush that carbon right now. I'm gonna open the carbon flush valve, make sure this valve is closed, going to here. Uh, and turn on the incoming water supply. Now, I have a solenoid valve hooked up, and so no water is going to pass through the unit, but these solenoid valves have a manual override on them. With the uh, override switch perpendicular to the pipe, in a sense, uh, going straight up and down towards the coil, it's in normal operation, water will not pass through. If I open it, water will start flowing through the unit right now. So this is a manual override. So we're gonna turn it on. Uh, we're gonna let the water pressure fill up the sediment filter, fill up the carbon filter, and we're gonna watch in this carboy here all the carbon dust come into it. And I'm not gonna slam the water pressure on. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. We don't need full water pressure. Now I can hear the water filling up the sediment and the carbon. Now you can see that carbon infused dusty water filling up this carboy. Now there's a lot of air bubbles in this line because there's a lot of air pockets in the carbon. Just let it flush until the stream of water is nice and consistent, no air bubbles in it and running clean. So we're gonna let that go for uh, about 40 gallons of water. So I'm gonna turn this on to show you what the water should look like when the carbon's flushed. We're gonna have a nice even stream, no air bubbles in it, and the water's gonna be crystal clear. You can see that no air bubbles, and we got this gorgeous pre-filtered feed water. That's the kind of water that we want to pump into this pump and this membrane. We've, we've uh, completely flushed the carbon. So with the carbon flushed, I can turn off this cool little flush valve assembly I made uh, and open up this one and now water will be routed to the pump. So let's go ahead and plumb the rest of the unit and then we can fire it up. So now we're gonna plumb the high pressure output of the pump to the membrane input. That's this fitting here to here. Now this comes half inch uh, standard EX1000 and they ship this way but in the deluxe kit you're gonna find this half inch by 3 8 stem adapter and we're simply gonna plug it in here like that we're gonna put in a piece of 3 8 tubing and we're gonna bring this tubing around and install it right into the pump like so I'm just gonna cut it right there and install it in. Now, we this is a stem fitting, so we don't need a clip here because the stem fitting won't collapse. We just need them on the tubing fittings. Also, we give you half inch high pressure clips, although you don't really need them. You can install them if you want on the half inch lines. This is the low pressure side of the system. It doesn't necessarily need a pressure clip, but they're good safety clips to keep these tubings from being pulled out or knocked out. So I just installed one here. 
And I'll put one down here, right after my flush kit. A carbon flush valve assembly. And if you want, you can go through the RO and put uh, pressure clips on every fitting if you want. I'm just gonna put them here on the high pressure side for now to show you how they work. Now we're going to plumb the flow box in to the output side of the membrane. So water moves through the water filter, through the sediment, through the carbon, into the pump, out of the pump, into the membrane here. It goes through the membrane at high pressure, and it comes out of the membrane over here at the end. There's a black fitting and a white fitting. The black fitting is for the drain, the white fitting is for the permeate or the RO water. So we're gonna plumb the drain first. Simply insert some black tubing into that black fitting and bring the tubing back around behind the flow box. We're gonna plumb it in right to the stainless steel valve right here. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it and insert it like so. Then I'm gonna take the RO line, insert it into the white fitting here, make sure it seats past the O-rings, and I'm gonna bring it up and plumb it into the bottom of this flow meter, directly behind it, right here. Here's my RO output line that's gonna to go to my tank or reservoir. I'm gonna plug it in to the top of the flow meter. We're gonna take our drain output line and we are gonna plug it into the top of the drain flow meter right in back. Now I have some high pressure lines here that I would like to put some clips on. So the output of the membrane uh, on the drain side is high pressure. And I like to put them on the RO side there too. So I'm gonna put two more clips over here. And then the drain side on the flow box as well, I'll put two more pressure clips over there. You could go through and put pressure clips on all the tubing connections uh, if you want to guarantee that they won't get pulled out or work their way out over time. 